I now give the floor to His Excellency Ole Shagun Ajadi Bakari, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Benham. Mr. President, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, and heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to speak to you today from this iconic rostrum of the United Nations on behalf of His Excellency, President Patrice Talon, President of the Republic of Benin. I would like at the outset to reaffirm the unwavering commitment of the Benin people to democracy, to political stability, and to the principle of the peaceful transfer of power. Since the historic national conference involving all stakeholders in February 1990, Benin has chosen the path of democracy under the successive leadership of our successive presidents and President Patrice Talon, we have been able to preserve and strengthen our institutions. Our defense and security forces, courageously and upholding the values of our republic, continue to protect our territory and our institutions each day. Any attempt at destabilization, be them they from within or without will be overcome. Our journey towards development is now irreversible. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, today the world is confronted with growing tensions and uncertainty becomes an everyday feature of our times. Each day we can see an increase in polarization with crises, that undermine social cohesion everywhere and mortgage off the future of our humanity, be this in the Sahel, in Sudan, in Ukraine, in the South China Sea, or in the Middle East. Conflicts which crop up undermine peace and global stability. These tensions bring but suffering and despair, causing waves of poverty that affect the most fragile economies and exacerbate people's vulnerability. Although Africa is often far from the source of these crises, it nonetheless remains deeply affected by them. The Sahel region in particular is today the theater of increasing tensions, exacerbated by tensions taken without the consent of African countries. This instability seriously compromises our sustainable development. Even more worrisome, some external forces are seeking to bring in their geopolitical ri ri rivalries into our region. Benin firmly condemns all attempts to make the Sahel into a new epicenter of geopolitical struggle. This type of interference provides fertile ground for terrorism. Terrorism is an abomination that we unreservedly condemn, be this in Africa or elsewhere. Terrorism is unacceptable. No cause can justify terror, suffering, and the destruction that it causes. Today, we reaffirm our commitment to African unity, more particularly in our region, West Africa, we have the historic responsibility to preserve the centuries-old fraternal ties that link our people. Benin is ready, ready to play its role in this fight against terrorism and in favour of development. Our unity of action is crucial, irrespective of which organisations we decide to belong to. This is also an opportunity for us to reaffirm our commitment to nonviolence. And it's because of this attachment and commitment to nonviolence that we condemn the war in Ukraine. 
It is because of this commitment to non-violence that we have condemned the terrorist attacks of the 7th of October and also the escalating violence that ensued in the Middle East. And in the same way, we condemn all forms of violence that each day plunge into mourning our brother and sister countries in the Sahel. We call on the international community to step up efforts to bring stability through dialogue, be this in the Middle East, where the two-state solution is the only viable option, or in Ukraine, in the Great Lakes region, in Sudan, in Libya, or in our sisterly Republic of Haiti. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, despite these hotbeds of tension, we must never lose sight of another major challenge that threatens the future of our world, poverty in all its forms. Five years from the deadline of 2030, it is painfully clear that we will not achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. But we must not give up the fight. The fight against poverty is one of the major challenges of our time. Without this, there will be neither real peace or lasting stability. Africa, ladies and gentlemen, is the future of the world. In just a few decades, our continent will be home to a quarter of humanity, our young people who are incredibly creative, and our natural resources are an indispensable asset for the future of our planet. But for this potential to be truly tapped into, we need to eradicate poverty in our continent. There is an urgent need to act because each year of delay compromises this future. In 25 years, when our country, or when our countries rather, for the most part, will be at least 100 years old, will we still have to discuss access to drinking water, to electricity, to healthcare and education? Or will we finally have turned the page which will enable each African to live in dignity? These are the essential questions that we need to respond to. The time for action is now. Since 2016, Benin has opted for progress under the leadership of President Patrice Talon. We have taken our destiny into our own hands. We've initiated, initiated major reforms, be this in the area of education, healthcare, or infrastructure. Today, we are focused on transformation and development. It's important for the world to recognize the efforts of African nations just like mine, just like Benin, who are striving for the future and who are taking their future into their own hands. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, for Africa truly to take off, it should reconcile itself with its own history and its real inner identity. Just like it's impossible to understand Europe without taking into consideration the influence of the Christian church, and just like it's impossible to understand the Middle East without striving to understand Islam, it's also impossible to grasp the essence of Africa without fully embracing its beliefs, its traditions and its civilization. This is a spirit that guided Benin, which is the motherland of the Vudan culture, that Benin took the initiative to correct negative perceptions of this culture, of our culture. We want to show the world the great richness and wealth of our civilization by understanding and respecting our history, our beliefs and our culture. The world will be able to understand who we are and why Africa is crucial for global balance and development. However, Respect for Africa does not just stop at recognizing its past. It also involves modern Pan-Africanism focused on action. Pan-Africanism engaged in poverty reduction in building a prosperous continent. A Pan-Africanism that goes over and beyond words and moves into action. This Pan-Africanism must be reflected by specific action. How can we promote African unity when it's easier for a European to travel throughout Africa than it is for an African 
him or herself to do so. Benin has made a bold, courageous, pan-African choice by abolishing visas for all African citizens. This gesture is not simply symbolic. It also reflects our revolve to build an Africa where each African can, can feel at home throughout the entire continent. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, more than ever, the respect for Africa involves recognizing and acknowledging its children dispersed through the world, our brothers and sisters of the diaspora uprooted by force during the dark days of the transatlantic slave trade must find their place once again within the African community. It is high time to heal these wounds, to rebuild this sacred link with those who, albeit physically far away, carry Africa in their hearts. People of African descent are not just distant relatives of our family. They are our children. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. They incarnate a essential essence of our collective identity. By recognizing their right to return, we say to them, you have never ceased belonging to this land. Africa is your home and we are waiting for you with open arms. 2024 marks the end of the first international decade of people of African descent. On this occasion, Benin has taken a historic measure by adopting unanimously at the National Assembly a law which grants the Benin nationality to all persons of African descent who so wish. This is more than just a simple symbolic gest gesture. rather, It is an invitation to a joint future, a vibrant call for unity and for solidarity. Together, Africans and people of African descent from the continent and the diaspora, we will meet the challenges of tomorrow. Together, we will build a strong, prosperous and respected Africa. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, Benin is ready, ready to pave the way for a unified Africa dynamic and open to the world, an Africa which takes itself into its own hand, engaged in addressing its own future. The century of Africa is within reach. It depends on our ability to seize this opportunity to build an Africa where each citizen, be he or she born on the continent or not, or part of the diaspora, plays a key role in our common Rebirth. We stand ready. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Benin. I now give the floor.